in the world. We've got the, the system that's going to prevail, the uh, financial, economic system, and political system that is the wave of the future, despite the, this barbaric attack, and uh, show confidence. Mr. Mayor, I'm just going to wind up by reading one line from uh, an editorial that was in the Los Angeles Times across the country on Friday. It said this, when was the last time you caught yourself praying for New Yorkers or congratulating them <laughs> as we do here and now? I think I speak for all of us when I say the uh, Los Angeles Times got it just right. Thank you so much for joining us. Good I luck sure to you. Did. And, and, and yeah, go ahead. And we pray for America. That's, uh, that's what we all do. We're all in this together and we're all Americans and we pray for our country and we know it's going to prevail. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. And uh, around the country today, Sunday, people have been attending services uh, here in Los Angeles. We're looking at some live pictures now, for example. This uh, scene that we're seeing in these pictures in Los Angeles, of course, uh, similar to church services around the country. Uh, during this difficult time, many people, including world leaders, survivors, families, are turning to prayer for comfort. Comfort. And at this moment, I'd like to pause and listen to some of the events happening in the United States today. Our words, our deeds, and in the giving of our gifts. At this time of offering our gifts, our tithes, let us indeed be most merciful. A lot of you have probably noticed that there's been a, a lot of stuff going on this week. And so I'm going to recommend to all of you, when you get back, your mom and dad need you right now. And so when you get back to your mom and dad this morning, I want you to give them a big old hug and hold on to them and tell them you love them. And I bet they're going to do the same thing for you. Yes, as difficult as it is, Jesus' command to forgive and to love our enemies calls us to eventually move beyond all of our mixed and tangled feelings toward that healing and wholeness which only God's justice and God's love can bring. I think for every person today, and I'm sure everybody, it went through your mind. What if I'd been on that airplane with just a few minutes of life? What if I'd been sitting in one of those towers and looked up and saw that plane coming into my office building? This is a dark day in America, but there has to be something that can sustain us. There has to be something that can hold us. There has to be something that can fortify us. There has to be something that can encourage us as we face these dark days. Millions of people praying today on this uh, day, this first Sunday after the uh, disaster last Tuesday. Here to discuss the power of prayer, religion, and family are two guests. Bill Bennett is a co-director of Empower America. And from our Boston Bureau, Rabbi Harold Kushner, he's the author of When Bad Things Happen to Good People. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us. Before we get started, just want to point out we had hoped that the re very Reverend Nathan Baxter from the Washington National Cathedral would be with us as well. But unfortunately, he was not able to make it this afternoon. And Rabbi Kushner, let's begin with the very title of your book that so many of us read many years ago, When Bad Things Happen to Good People. In that book, you write this, Why then do bad things happen to good people? One reason is that our being human leaves us free to hurt each other, and God can't stop us without taking away the freedom that makes us human. Uh, a lot of people are asking that question right now when they see what has happened. Uh, uh, your thoughts on, 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 this, uh, on these tumultuous events? Well, the first thing, Wolf, would be that the theology really has to wait until the grieving and the bleeding has stopped. 
that the first thing you ask in a case like this is not why does God let it happen, but how can I help people to whom it happened? When you have done that, when we observed, as we've just about finished the seven-day memorial period, which is psychologically useful, then you ask, where was God in all this? And my answer is that God didn't want this to happen. God grieves with us. God inspires firefighters and rescuers to risk their lives. God motivates people to give blood, to give money, to do whatever they can to help people. This is where I find God, not in the accident, but in the incredible resilience of the human community to surmount the accident and to insist that life is worth living even in a precarious world. Bill Bennett, uh, I'll ask you a question that a lot of people around the country are asking. How can a compassionate God allow this kind of tragedy to occur? Well, I, I would agree with uh, Rabbi Kushner. I think a, a brief theological moratorium on theology is probably a good idea. We've had some uh, quick and glib theological judgments from a few over the last few days, which I think have not been, not been helpful. I think Billy Graham answered that question at the Nath National Cathedral. Wolf. He said, we don't know. We don't know why. Uh, but we do know that God has given us freedom. And in Christianity, we believe man has fallen. And that means with freedom, uh, man can rise to tremendous heights of uh, dignity and honor. He can also sink by his own hand uh, to the worst depths. That's what I've been saying all week, that we at least have had a moment of moral clarity. We now understand that a lot of the s seemingly or so-called learned discussions of the last 30 years in which people have said in our universities and elsewhere, well, maybe there isn't such thing as good and evil or right and wrong. It's all contextual. It all depends on where you sit, uh, are really bunk. Uh, we saw good and evil this week. We saw the face of evil. Uh, we saw the hand of evil. So I hope that moment of moral clarity is preserved and extended. Rabbi Kushner, what do good people do now uh, in dealing with this evil? The first thing you do is just hang together the way we just saw people gathering in churches, people gathering in their synagogues for Rosh Hashanah in a couple of days, knowing that you're not alone, that you're part of a, a large extended family of people grieving, hoping for better. The second thing I think we really have to be careful of is, as somebody put it, be very careful whom you choose as an enemy, for you may become like him. God forbid that in our efforts to do something because we feel so helpless and powerless, we forget the values that make us Americans. I think what good people do now is support the government and support their neighbors, look for the United States government to punish the perpetrators, but not look for revenge and not look for wanting to hurt somebody, hit somebody, kill somebody, just to make us feel less helpless. Bill Bennett, uh, you know there's an urge out there for revenge in the American public. I think revenge, revenge is deserved. I don't know if I disagree with the rabbi or not, but I think vengeance is uh, correct in this, in this situation. Uh, I know vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, but uh, in World War II, he used Franklin Delano Roosevelt and the Greatest Generation uh, and Churchill and others uh, to gain that vengeance. Revenge, punishment for what has happened is, I think, exactly appropriate. Uh, no, we do not want to become uh, what, our, what these perpetrators of evil are. I don't think we will. I think it would be very hard for Americans uh, to do that. But we fight. We pray and we fight. And it is right to fight. Uh, there's no theological or moral uh, set of principles that I know of that have any respectability that argue that we cannot fight uh, and that we cannot punish those who have done this great uh, evil to us. Great evil and damage have been inflicted on us. And I think as uh, you, you know, we heard those, those beautiful sounds of the Battle Hymn of the Republic, and we heard it from the National Cathedral on Thursday. Uh, there's a great line, there are a lot of great lines in that song, and one of them is, Loose the fateful lightning of his terrible swift sword. I trust the United States, I trust the leaders of the United States, I trust the people of the United States. I think we will do the right thing, but to do the right thing here requires us to do something strong and direct and straightforward. Rabbi Kushner, uh, what, what's wrong with revenge right now? I've got to clarify the distinction between punishment and revenge. Punishment is finding people who deserve to be hurt for what they did to hurt others. Revenge is taking pleasure in hurting somebody because you're feeling helpless and you can't handle feeling helpless. Revenge is really more about control, it's more about exercising power, and it's less about justice. What we did in World War II, which I totally endorse, was punishment for people who deserve to be punished. It was not revenge against anybody who happened to come along as a target. 
I hope we will come down very hard on the people behind this and everyone who supported them, but I hope we will never permit ourselves to be carried away in the direction of hating, hurting innocent Muslims, Arab Americans who share our values, not the values of the terrorists. Bill Bennett, in your book, The Book of Virtues, a, a bestseller, uh, another book that I read, you write this, and, and let's put it up on the screen. We need wisdom, often the wisdom of a wise leader, to give our courage determinate form, to give it intelligent direction. Is the United States getting that leadership right now? Sure it is. I think you, you saw it today uh, with the array of guests uh, you had as, uh, on, on earlier. I think you're also seeing it from the president. You saw it from the Secretary of State, a stunning interview by the Vice President uh, of the United States this morning. Uh, I think George Bush's uh, words as the week went on got better and better, got stronger and stronger. He spoke more, more and more from his own heart and his own convictions, his visit uh, to New York. Local leaders, Mayor Giuliani has distinguished himself. You bet we have leadership. I now think again we have clarity, Wolf, about things like intelligence and the proper use of intelligence and how we have trashed our intelligence uh, agencies in the past and now they need to be rebuilt. Rabbi Kushner, the uh, latest CNN USA Today Gallup poll just out today uh, shows that the American public thinks President Bush is doing a very good job. 86% approve of the way he's handling this crisis, only 10% disapprove. What do you look for? What should the American people look for in, in their leaders right now? You know, Wolf, one of the miracles of American history is that when we have needed strong leadership, we have found strong leadership. No one could have predicted that Abraham Lincoln would become the president he was. No one could have predicted that Franklin Roosevelt would have become the leader he was. And I hope we will be as blessed in this particular crisis. I think what we need is, as Mr. Bennett said, a leader who will inspire, who will make people ready to follow him, a leader who will make us prepared and willing to make sacrifices if necessary, sacrificing our lives and the ultimate sacrifice, sacrificing our comfort, our material goods, but perhaps more than anything else, we will require a leader who has the wisdom to know when not to listen to the public clamoring for military action and violence, when to act strongly and when to withhold the terrible swift sword. And I pray we'll have it. And you know, Bill Bennett, I want to pick up on that point. Uh, there was immediate pressure on President Bush to respond swiftly, militarily, uh, even some of his uh, advisors, even there's a report the president wanted to do something, but people held him back and said, let's do this the right way. I imagine, he, I imagine he held himself back, too. By the way, I don't get the sense that the American people are acting like a mob right now, screaming for anybody's head. I think they're remarkably upset and remarkably cool. Uh, such have been the people I've talked to. Uh, Shakespeare says some are born great, some achieve greatness, some have greatness thrust upon them. And... Uh, it may be that this is the situation with President Bush, and I think he has responded very, very well. There's another aspect about democracy, though, and, and leadership. It's not just for our leaders to lead. It's for the citizenry to lead. And I'm thinking here about those citizen leaders on that airplane. Everybody's making a great deal as, as of course, it's news about this notion that the president gave authority to shoot down uh, commercial airliners if they were heading toward the White House or someplace. A couple of citizens made that decision, essentially, morally, the same decision, when they decided to take that pilot or try to take that plane down so that it would not do further damage. We are calling on our leaders to do a lot, but such times call on us. We call on ourselves to do a lot as well. And one thing in our minds, I think, as we think about the years and, uh, to come, is uh, Mr. Glick and Mr. Burnett and the others on that flight uh, that went down in Pennsylvania. The kind of courage and citizenship that uh, they showed is uh, just as important a part of the strength of America. Terrible. Stand by, uh, gentlemen. I want to listen to Governor Pataki speaking now live in New York. Uh, let, let's uh, take a break and listen to him. That we think back and give thanks for those who are lost and still missing, and those who are confirmed dead. We've seen many different organizations take great pain, Port Authority has also suffered enormously. Their headquarters, their offices were in the tower. Their leadership, their police were in the tower. They've done a spectacular job since this disaster. They're still out there at the airports, at the bridges, 
at the scene at ground zero, risking their lives.